All right, guys, I've got a forum thread where I went through the install of the Comma 3X on the Mach-E. This video is gonna go along with it to help with some of the things people were having some trouble with. So the tools you're gonna to need are a T25 Torx, a 5 16 socket or nut driver, and some trim tools. So the first thing we gotta do is we actually gotta get all the stuff out of our trunk because we gotta empty our trunk out. So we're gonna do that first. Okay, so we got the spare tire or the tire inflator kit, the cover and the package tray out. So we've got full access to the trunk. We pop these two covers up using a small screwdriver and use our T25 Torx to remove these two screws and then our 5 16 socket to remove this bolt and this bolt. Those are the four uh, items we got to remove back here. Now that we got our two Torx screws and our two uh, bolts out, we can literally just grab this panel and pull up on it and then away. And it's out of the way. And that allows us to get to this panel here, which is where the IPMA is. So you just uh, you can grab that right there, pull up on it and it'll release. And then you can pull out. And uh, your trim will come right out. I lost a little yellow thing there. It looks like it needs to go back right down there. So I'll just pop it back on. Here's our IPMA. We're looking for the black cable. And uh, so I've got a video I'm gonna link on exactly how you make that connection to the IPMA. Uh, so go watch that. And then you can come back here to see how to write your USB cable. So the USB cable, needs to be a 15 foot at minimum USB-C 3.2 generation 2. I'm going to link one that I know works into the description below. But we're going to take this and get this all the way up to the windshield. So the key point is, is you want to go up under the headliner. If you go down under the doors, you're going to need about 18 or 19 foot of cable. Whereas if you go up through the headliner, you'll be able to get there in about 15 foot. In fact, I've got 16 foot of cable and you can see I've probably got a foot and a half coiled up. So this panel is loose and we can get almost to the back seat. So now we're gonna start looking at the trim we have to take to get this routed. First thing we gotta do is fold our seat down. Once we folded our seat down, the rest of this panel can come free. You don't gotta get it completely out. You just gotta be able to fish that USB-C cable out through here. And you can see mine is right here. And it goes, it goes up. So uh, this panel here also just pulls out. You can just put a little pressure on it and uh, route the cable uh, up under the trim and then push it back up behind there and then that gets you up into the headliner and you're just going to take it and push it under the headliner i can feel it right there with my finger next thing you have to do is get this center trim right here where your seat belt is out so let me get the seat moved and we'll take a look at that get the driver's seat all the way forwards uh, this bottom trim here just pulls out you can find somewhere to grab it, like right there, and just pull, and it pops away. And there's a 10 millimeter bolt right there. We're gonna remove that, and then this panel will pop free. Once we take that 10 millimeter bolt out, we just grab this panel and pull it, and it pops free. And you can see I've got my cable routed right here. I'm just gonna continue to tuck it under the headliner and under that weather stripping until you get here. And once you get here, you've got a couple of options. The first time I did this install, I pulled this trim piece off. And that trim piece is definitely not a fun piece to pull off because it's got these clips uh, that are tethered and they're very hard to get back on. Almost everybody says this is the hardest part of the install is doing this trim piece right here. Uh, the second time I did one, I was able to take a small coat hanger wire and slide it through here 
hook my USB cable and then pull it back through. So you can certainly try that. Now you've got a bolt here holding the headliner in. So you've got to basically go right here with a, with a coat hanger and you can catch your USB cable and pull it through. If you're not having any luck doing that, then you can take this trim panel off, which I'm not gonna do because that is the hardest part, but you just get your trim removal tool, hook it right here and pull it. And then you can look at the, the forum post I linked below on how to remove those tethers and put them back in. Then you're going to uh, come up under the front of the headliner right here to your rear view mirror panel. That just pops right off with some pulls and bring your USB-C cable right through here under the, the camera module and then go into however you're gonna mount your comma. So uh, I have a, a quick release sliding dock right here. Um, so there are several types of quick release docks. Uh, I'll put a link to this one, which can be 3D printed yourself. Jantech sells one on the internet that uh, is a sliding dock. And then on the Discord, there are some guys selling a magnetic one. Um, if you're going to be using a quick release dock, you can take your USB cable and just plug it into your dock. If you're going to use the stock mount, which is a fixed mount that glues, or not glues, but tapes right there, and then you, you mount your device permanently, uh, then what you'll want to do is you'll want to use the short cable that Kama sends with your device, which I don't have because my device is really old, but it's a little bit longer than this one. It's got a 90 on it, and then it comes out. And they send a coupler, and you'll take that coupler, and you'll hook it into your long cable, and then hide the coupler up under this cover where the rearview mirror goes. Um, so if you use a quick release dock, just run your long cable right into it. If you're going to use the fixed dock, then put the coupler on the short cable, connect it to the long cable, and hide the coupler right up in here before you put your trim piece back on. The other uh, part of this you can concern yourself with is the Kama Power, which is the device that plugs into ODD B2 port and then comes back here to your harness and plugs into your harness box right beside the USB-C. You can see on mine it's a Cat5 port because I have the old style Kama harness. On the new style it's actually a four pin connector. Um, but that connector is not going to be long enough for a Mach-E. Uh, so if you want to connect the Kama Power, which is optional, you'll connect it right here to your ODB2 port. You will uh, pull this trim panel right here off, which it just pulls off with your finger, and you can route that cable up, and you will definitely have to remove this trim panel if you're gonna run the Kama Power, but you'll remove this trim panel and put the comp power behind there and then run it back the rest of the way with all your other cables. Now that cable is gonna be too short when you get it from Kama, so you're actually gonna have to cut it in half, buy some extra wire, splice it in with some crimp splices or solder splices to make that cable about four foot longer. So almost everybody who's running a Mach-E runs it without the, the Kama power that plugs into the ODB2 port. Uh, the purpose that that uh, extra wire serves is to keep your comma powered between drives so that it can upload your drives to the internet and so you don't have to wait for it to boot when you start your next drive. Uh, but between having to lengthen the cable to make it fit and the fact that the Mach-E has a very small 12 volt battery uh, and is subject to getting drained down pretty quick, most people just omit the ODB2 cable when they install the comma 3X on a Mach-E.